So Gary Russell Jr. retains his WBC World Featherweight title with a 12 round unanimous decision over Joseph Diaz. This was a decent enough fight. It wasn't the thriller Manila or anything, but it was a decent enough fight. I might be in the minority because Gary Russell definitely won. And as I say, it was a decent enough fight, but I was left with the feeling of being more disappointed in Diaz's performance than I was impressed by Russell's performance. Gary Russell, it was a, a workmanlike performance from him. He did what he had to do. He moved around, he boxed, he stayed active, but he never really put any serious damage on Joseph Diaz for the most part. And that's why I was disappointed with Joseph Diaz's performance because he's a young guy fighting in his first world title fight. I expected a bit more fire from him particularly when he started falling behind on the cards. He left it way too late before he mounted a rally. Throughout the middle rounds, when Gary Russell was picking up his lead in the fight, there was just such a lack of urgency from Joseph Diaz. And whenever Joseph Diaz did land shots, there were quality punches, particularly to the body. I was really, really impressed with the quality of his body punches. But there just wasn't enough of them. He was just content to walk forward and let Gary Russell get combinations off. Most of Gary Russell's punches were hitting Diaz's gloves and elbows and arms. A couple of them were getting through here and there. But just by virtue of the fact that Russell was moving his hands and Joseph Diaz wasn't, regardless if the punches were landing clean, Russell was picking up rounds. And you can't argue with him picking up rounds because, as I say, Diaz was just so inactive it was disappointing. Diaz fought like a jaded veteran for a lot of the fight. And he's a young guy in his first world title fight. He fought like a jaded veteran just going through the motions, you know, rather than taking the situation by the scruff of the neck, taking the bull by the horns and really going for it. In the final couple rounds, he did go for it, finally, eventually. But it was just too little too late, you know. Far too little too late. So I was disappointed by Diaz's performance, to be honest. Uh, I feel like he could have had a lot more success against Russell if he'd pushed the issue earlier. Maybe he was wary of Russell's speed because to me, Russell look like, looks like he's actually slowed down. He does have tremendous hand speed in short bursts, but he used to show his hand speed a lot more in his earlier fights. Perhaps it's also a case of Russell being wary of of injuring his hands because he's had serious hand problems throughout his career. So maybe he's not so quick to let those blistering combinations go all the time like he used to because he's trying to preserve those hands. Um, I'm not sure, but with regards to Diaz, maybe that's what it was. Maybe when Russell did let his hands go, Diaz was maybe a bit intimidated by the speed and Russell can punch pretty good. You know, he's not a massive puncher, but he's got decent power. And when the shots are coming that fast, you often don't see him. So maybe it was the, the blister and speed of Gary Russell Jr.'s combinations, which, you know, now and again, he would let off these blistering combinations. Maybe it's that that kept Diaz honest and made him hesitant to let his hands go for the majority of the fight who knows but yeah that's the overall feeling that sticks with me from watching the fight is that I was more disappointed in Diaz than I was impressed with Russell so again I'll probably probably be in a minority when it comes to that most people are probably really impressed by Russell but I've been watching Russell for years and I was expecting big things from him but that's when his hand problems really surfaced and it became clear that this is a a damaged fighter not because of punishment he's taken but because punishment punishment his hands have taken and once i realized the severity of his hand issues i thought to myself this guy is not going to he's not going to be as good as i thought he was and obviously he had the lomachenko fight which in retrospect even though he lost to lomachenko and lost soundly 
he did better than most other Lomachenko opponents. <laughs> you know, a lot better. He survived the 12 for one. And he survived the 12 without even coming close to getting stopped or coming close to quitting. So you do have to give him credit for that. He is a good fighter. And he showed more movement in this fight. And perhaps that's something they've been working on. Because Gary Russell, for most of his career, was a very flat-footed guy. Even against Lomachenko, there's not much movement from Gary Russell. He's a very stationary guy with slow feet and incredibly quick hands. But in this fight with Diaz, he was noticeably quicker on his feet than he was previously, earlier on in his career. Maybe that's something they've been working on, you know, moving his feet more. And maybe that adds a new wrinkle to his game and makes him a more multi-dimensional fighter. And perhaps better overall, we'll see. But maybe you guys were more impressed with Russell's performance than mine. He did what he had to do. He beat an undefeated guy, don't get it twisted. The tactics were correct. But I just feel like Diaz let the fight slip away. So, anyway, let me know how you feel about it in the comment section below. Who would you like to see Gary Russell Jr. fight? Maybe you'd like to see a Carl Frampton showdown, um, Josh Warrington showdown. Let me know what you think in the comments, people. It's happening. I'm out.